Welcome to the Hudson Show. Coming up, how you could get $3 million from NASA. Also, the best present to get newlyweds. All that and more on the way next. It is the Hudson Show from Radio U. Thanks for checking out the podcast today. We've all been in those situations, right, at Thanksgiving, or in my case, recently, Canadian Thanksgiving, where your uncle is talking about politics or whatever his thing is that he's going off about, and you're like, I know he's wrong. Why does he think? Why is he so confident that he's right? We've Each of us know many people like that. Maybe you are the person that's like that. We now finally have an answer as to why people behave this way. A new study has been done that uh, they they have a good term for it. They call it the illusion of information adequacy. In other words, what they found in this study was the reason that people will get so entrenched in an opinion that is actually wrong is because they go off of essentially what they read or see, what information they are presented at first. So it, the way they tested it was they gave uh, they came up with a problem, a fictional problem at a school and had different groups of people uh, read different stories on this fictional problem that were each presented from one point of view or another, and then one that actually presented a a fair and balanced view of all of the perspectives of, again, this fake problem. Then when they uh, they quizzed these people about the problem of what should they do to fix this problem, of course, everybody's uh, opinion was heavily influenced by the information they were given at first. And so I love the quote that the, uh, the researchers came up with on this. They said that uh, individuals rarely pause to consider what information they may be missing. So whatever you see at first, you think, okay, this is the right thing. Even if that's subconscious, you don't realize it. And then any uh, subsequent information you may be presented with in an argument later on, you're like, well, that's not wrong. That's wrong because that's what I read at first. How can we learn from this? Well, I mean, the it's like Socrates says, you don't know what you don't know, you have to be open to new information at all times. And as much as you can, when something comes up, um, take the time to experience as many viewpoints on it as possible so that you're just getting all the information and making an informed decision instead of just going off of what the first person you heard say about it is. Now, you, the good news is here on the Hudson Show, you can trust me. I always uh, read all different viewpoints on every story before I present what I think. It's the Hudson Show. I can't get pregnant, but I do love coffee. So I think this is great news that a new study has come out that has debunked what has long been really more than a myth. Uh, It's just been the common belief. And I think there was a lot of evidence, at least there was some uh, that led women, pregnant women to avoid caffeine. Well, according to this new study, no longer necessary. Uh, It says that pregnant women can indeed enjoy coffee and caffeine while pregnant because the genetic analysis done in the study found little evidence that maternal coffee consumption during pregnancy causes uh, any neurodevelopmental difficulties in children. In other words, according to this study anyways, you can take it from me, Dr. Hudson. If you're pregnant, you can have caffeine. This is great news. This is absolutely great news. Think about how many more babies are going to be born now. I have to imagine there's just been women that have been like, well, I'd love a child, but I can't go nine months without coffee. Now, no longer an issue. Times are tough. Inflation still running rampant. It's affecting everything. Prices everywhere going sky high, and that includes fast food, which is why it's nice. The Taco Bell has just added a new feature to its mobile app. They call it the name your price tool, like they're some kind of insurance company, but it's instead for figuring out how much Taco Bell you can afford. You literally go in, you put in how much you're willing to spend on Taco Bell, and then they will create some kind of meal for you that fits your budget. Um, Although the list of things that it says that it does not include are actually ridiculous. It will not include drinks, freezes, combos, boxes, party packs, meals for two, meals for four, sauces, passes or early access products. So basically tacos, it sounds like is the only thing that it will put on the list for you. But I don't know. I was trying it out, you guys. And uh, it's so crazy. It keeps telling me that there's nothing on Taco Bell's menu I can afford. A couple of big trades in the NFL yesterday involving wide receivers. First, the Jets traded for Devontae Adams, picking him up 
from the, I almost said Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, and then the Buffalo Bills answered their division rivals by uh, trading for Amari Cooper from the Cleveland Browns. A lot to take away from these trades. First of all, many saying the Jets, it's like a panic move uh, to trade for Devontae Adams after they lose on Monday Night Football. Again, a week after they fire their coach in what some called a panic move. Um, and some are saying that they're, you know, kowtowing to Aaron Rodgers, just giving him what he wants again because that's gone so well. Oh, I'm sorry that Aaron Rodgers wants one of the top five receivers in the NFL. Uh, how dare he that he used to play with? And a lot of the problem with Aaron Rodgers, too, right? We've seen the receivers that him and uh, the receivers sometimes seem to not quite be on the same page. Well, I think he's going to be uh, right on the same page with Devontae Adams after all the success they had. For so many years, they only had to give up like what a third, second round draft pick to get him. That draft pick's not going to do them any good um, if they have to completely like start. If all the guys, like the guy who traded uh, for Devontae Adams is fired, what good does that pick do him, anyways? So they got to make some results happen here. I think that's a good trade. Um, I think that's a big upgrade over Mike Williams, who they're now shopping around to see if anybody wants him. Spoiler alert, I bet you they don't because he's not that good. Uh, and then the Brown or the Browns give away Amari Cooper, which I really think says more about the Browns and how they're giving up on this season uh, than it does uh, on the Bills. Although, wouldn't you know, like it still wouldn't shock me. It would shock me if Deshaun Watson at this point starts playing very well, but it wouldn't shock me if the Browns turn around and string together a few wins. Like you can do that without Amari Cooper. If he was injured, would anybody be like, "Oh, their season is over"? No, it's just showing that they're not taking it all, especially that seriously. And the Bills, of course, that's an upgrade for them. So, congratulations. We are doing Would You Rather Wednesday. Today's question from Annie. Would you rather go on a week-long camping trip with the Lemu, Emu, and Doug or Flo and Jamie from the Progressive Commercials? 8772 Radio U. Many good answers coming in. Regina Wants to have it both ways. She says, can I have the emu and Flo? I guess I'll go with Flo because I'm not so sure about that Doug dude. feel like we have a more established history of Flo. We know what Flo's about. Um, but the emu, I just... So some people are saying the emu like Shrew says, I mean, emus won a war. We even know what Shrew... What is he talking about? Emus won a war. Uh, I think I'd feel fairly safe with a domesticated emu. Shrew, I, have you ever met an emu in person? They are wild cards. They will peck your eyes out. They're like one of the biggest birds. How could you feel safe with that? Which is why Jeff, I'm with you, Jeff. I would go with Flo and Jamie 1000% before the Liberty Mutual people. The emu might try to eat me. I don't think they're carnivores, but I do think they're dangerous. They're big. They're as big as I am. They're definitely stronger. I mean, it could just, it could simply lay an egg that would probably uh, do me in. Chris says Flo and Jamie all the way. They keep the energy up, and I'm not trying to share a tent with a giant bird. I think Flo and Jamie, listen, they're not an easy slam dunk choice because they would be a lot to deal with. It's a lot of personality there, uh, but like I think they'd be friendly. They always seem to have a good attitude. I like that. I like that. Um, an emu, I just can't do an emu. And Doug, what do we know about Doug? He's a bumbling, I don't even know what his job is. Um... And he just seems like he's not, he's, he's going to be bringing trouble to the table. He's also bringing an emu, which is a, you involve an emu and I'm out. I don't think anything else needs to be said, but that's a great question from Annie. We were just doing uh, would you rather Wednesday? Annie gave us a question. Would you rather go on a week long camping trip with Flo and Jamie from progressive or Doug and the lemu emu from the Liberty mutual commercials? And uh, well, let me give you the quote. Shrew says, I mean, emus won a war, so I think I'd feel fairly safe with a domesticated emu. I said, I said, who knows what Shrew is talking about? Apparently, people know. People know about the emu war. I've got so many people sending me in links here. Tell me y'all just look this up, too. Like, you didn't just have this link ready to go. Like, the emu war, Hudson, how did you not know? But apparently, the great emu war, for those like me that do not know, was uh, a situation in Australia where they tried to basically curb the emu situation and it was a, an abject failure. The emus won the war. So now, okay, now we all know about this. Um, save that for uh, useless knowledge one day on the Hudson Show. Now we all know about this. Let's go back to your answer then, Shrew. Uh, emus won a war, so you think you'd feel safe. The emus beat 
the Australians in a war. What do you think they're going to do to you? He says, I'm under the assumption that emu is trained and domesticated. True. That emu is going to train and domesticate you. It, you just don't stand a chance against an emu. You're done. Why would you want that on a camp? It's going to ruin the camping trip. It's going to suck. You don't want to do that. Trust me. Although, well, no, I was going to say you could, if you needed food, if things got out of hand, then you'd have the emu. But I mean, that, that thing's going to use you as food. I've got some good news to start your day. Uh, I've got a way for you to make $3 million. And I know what you're thinking. Hudson. How can you help me make $3 million? Well, NASA's giving it away. They are offering $3 million if you can help them solve the problem. I guess that's all the good news. Um, Unless you happen to know anything about uh, like recycling in space, because that's the problem that NASA's trying to solve uh, as they prepare to once again send people back to the moon. One thing they're concerned about is... uh, sustainability in space so they need some uh, folks to come up with ideas uh, as to how they can start recycling different types of waste and food packaging and other materials that may uh, you know may be seen as trash here and it'd be easy to recycle or throw away on earth but in space it's a little different so if you have any ideas let NASA know they might give you three million dollars yeah here's the bad news I think I've already got a three million dollar idea uh, so NASA, I hope you're listening. Um, the idea is just let it float away. It's space. There's not even any wildlife. There's nothing to worry about. There's less gravity. So you don't even need like a trash bin. It's the moon, right? If people like you walk on the moon and you kind of like jump and then you, you could float away. Think about all the trash. You got a, a Twix wrapper. Just let it go out into space. It's not going to harm anybody because there isn't anybody to harm. Problem solved. I'll take my $3 million. Are you an Apple Watch user? Can I be honest? I've never understood it. I've never understood what's the point of having a phone that's attached to my wrist when I've already got a phone attached to my face 24-7. But if you are an Apple Watch user, I guess maybe I'm starting to understand a little bit because uh, some are saying that the Apple Watch Vitals app has been able to predict their sickness before they've actually gotten sick. Um, Many are saying that the app has predicted their colds and even COVID days and days before they actually experienced any symptoms. Somebody on X with a a Series 9 watch said, it detected a few things with my vitals days before I tested positive for COVID. Okay, okay, now this is cool. I mean, that if it's true that the Apple Watch Vitals app can actually do this and let you know that you're sick before you even know, that's impressive. That's like magic. That's, that's the future. But how does that benefit me? You know, like what would I do? Am I going to call? Hey, boss, coming up in four days. Looks like I'm going to get COVID. Can't come in. You think, you think Michael the sledgehammer is going to let that slide? I don't think so. So I don't, I don't really know how this can benefit me. But I mean, yet again, it is cool. If you had to guess... Which state is the drunkest? Go ahead, guess. I really don't think I would have gotten this. I would not have gotten this, but Vine Pear has just put out a uh, report on which states drink the most alcohol per capita. Coming in at number one, yet again, I wouldn't have guessed this, although some part of me says it makes sense. New Hampshire. In uh, New Hampshire, their residents drink 4.43 gallons of alcohol per capita Per year, that uh, easily puts them in at number one. Number two, this one shocks me, is Delaware. And then number three, not a state, but uh, this is not a surprise. Washington, D.C. comes in at third. What could they possibly, what reason would they possibly be drinking booze in Washington, D.C.? I'm just surprised. I feel like the South, like I'm thinking like college towns. I'm thinking Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you know, or Wisconsin, where they love their beer. At least that's what I thought. I thought they did. But uh, apparently not uh, the, the states that drink the most. Now, you could easily, though, you should be able to get the state that drinks the least alcohol per capita. Of course, that's Utah, which explains why they do all those goofy, dirty soda things. Which, to be fair, though, like, I'd say goofy, dirty sodas, and they are weird. Like, putting what are you putting milk in soda for? But 
if like an alien came down from outer space that had never seen anything about Earth and you gave him a dirty soda combo of some kind and any kind of alcohol, the alien would be like, well, the dirty soda is much better. This is this is the thing. This is what you guys drink all the time, right? This is what you drink to make you happy. Uh, the alien would be very probably shocked to find out that so many, in, especially in New Hampshire, are drinking so much alcohol. Got a food fight, a seasonably appropriate food fight, thanks to Krispy Kreme. And Nene is here to enjoy it, hopefully with me. Nene, we're doing Ghostbusters Donuts from Krispy Kreme. Hello, everyone. It's the Nene Show. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Guys, today we're actually trying Ghostbuster Donuts. The The donuts aren't busting, but I'll tell you what, hey. they might have some ghosts in them, we too. Don't, we don't know that yet. Um, first of all, how many Ghostbusters movies have you seen? All right, guys, so let's try the donuts. <laughs> um, I've, I've, I think I've watched like the first one. Oh, you, just so the you first have seen one. one. You've seen I one. did watch, you know when they rebooted it like six or seven years ago or so, and With, it had Paul Rudd in it? Okay, yeah, that one. I watched that one too, yeah. but the second one that they came out with that one, I have not seen either. Yeah, no, neither have I. I just saw the first of the original and the reboot. That's it. Okay. That's good. No, that's a good, that's a, if you were going to choose two, I think those are the right two to choose. Um, I love the Krispy Kreme. They actually... Like, have a Ghostbusters branded box. Yeah, this actually is really nice. And it like, comes in black, too. What's the little thing that they catch the ghosts in? Because this is exactly what it looks like. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Is it the ghost catcher? The is it the ghost buster? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I, I, I haven't seen ghosts. And you know what I need to do this Halloween is watch Ghostbusters. Um, so I guess the, the collaboration is working in that sense. But you know what else I need to do is taste these donuts because I'm hungry. Can I eat them now? Which ones do we have? Oh, there are four There's different four. Ghostbuster donuts. And uh, three of them, three of them have like little candies or little faces on them, which I think is it, like they've actually gone above and beyond with the brand. I like this these. big puffy white one because it looks like yeah. the Stay Puffed Marshmallow. That's what it is. Is that your, is, did you get the butt or the head of the Stay Puffed uh, I think you gave me the butt. Yes, I did. So yes, thanks. You this, act, you, he asked the question like he didn't no, cut up the donuts himself and give it to me. Um, okay, so that one, if you want to do that first, that's a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man donut pull apart. Um, pull it's, apart? It's a pull apart donut with powdered topping topped with marshmallow flavored buttercream and a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man candy. We have way too many donuts here. This is, we're going to regret this by the time we're done. I'm going to go into a coma trying to eat all of these, but I will say, this may be the only one I've tried, but this is the best one I've tried. Mm -hmm. And also, technically, it has to be the worst one, too. Really like this one. I'll tell you what. The uh, No, I have no thoughts. What are your thoughts? <laughs> um, I don't normally typically like marshmallow, but I like that donut. So that's saying something. It's a good donut. What other ones do we have? Well, let's do like the boring one next. The boring one that's just How orange, do you have a boring donut? Orange with half with sprinkles on half of it. They call it the How is that boring? Well that has sprinkles. But a glazed a, donut is boring. It's just, they call it the ecto sprinkled donut. It's a just a donut dipped in orange colored icing and sprinkled with neon sprinkles. That's just a donut. Chat, it's not does like that sound donut. boring to you? I think a glazed donut's boring. A donut hole is boring, but not one that has Orange, green, white, black sprinkles with the orange filling on top. Hey, it might be boring, but it tastes good. Like, why do you, you don't even need to go above and beyond that because that's just good enough on its own. It's tasty. I love how every time we do a Krispy Kreme food fight, which is like every three days, <laughs> it's like, do we ever have a bad donut? It's, it seems rare. It definitely is rare. Okay, so we got two more. We have the Slimer Donut and the Cookies and Cream Donut. Which would you like to do first? Uh, cookies and Cream. Cookies and Cream. That one has uh, a donut. Cookies and Cream! <laughs> it's filled with lemon flavor. No, wrong thing. Um, <laughs> wrong description. <laughs> wrong one and completely. Um, it's dipped in chocolate icing, topped with Oreo pieces, a dollop of flavored buttercream with Oreo, and a No Ghost logo candy. Oh, wow. Guys, we actually got a bad donut. It's bad? This is terrible. No, it's not. I hate it. Keep in mind, guys, disclaimer, I don't like chocolate. Mm. I really don't. The vanilla, the original, the glaze, that's all me. Chocolate, that's getting spit out. Okay, that's a crazy thing to say, but the logo candy 
is a miss. Logo. You can just peel that right off. It doesn't taste good. It's chewy. Wait, it doesn't can have you eat flavor. it? Yeah. Is it edible? It's a candy. Well, I kind of want it. Hang on. T- you're going to be disappointed. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't look... That did not taste... It tasted like like paper. Yeah. Like I wasn't actually mm. trying to eat this. They just had it on there for decoration. Oh, make sure you remove it. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that, but the rest of the donut, fine. Okay. Now that one that I got ahead of myself and started There's reading. another one. The Slimer Donut. An unglazed donut filled with lemon glazed, uh, lemon flavored green filling dipped in purple and green icing with a Slimer candy. Oh, God. You don't like the lemon? No, the slime, the, the candy. Oh, the candy. The candies are to on top or a miss. Yeah. Huge but, miss. Oh my gosh. Look at the color of the icing though inside. Mm. I feel like we should not be eating that. Ladies and gentlemen, we found a winner. The filling inside is what mm. makes this donut better than the stave puff marshmallow pull apart. However many adjectives you want to use for that donut. <laughs> I like it too. I like the lemon. I, I think th- I, and this is crazy to say, cause I don't normally rock with marshmallow, but I think the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man is my favorite. That's my second favorite. But they're all fine. They're all pretty good. The chocolate one was bad because not only was it chocolate, but I don't know what the heck that candy was on top, but you couldn't eat it. And they said you could. Yeah. That's Lies. A lie. That's a lie. It, it has the no ghost logo, but it's really crossed out cause you're not supposed to eat it. You're supposed to bust them instead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, overall, a successful food fight, though. This is good. Yes, it was successful. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Heard Sparkle talking about this yesterday on Radio U. She comes on after me here on the Hudson Show. Uh, she's saying that apparently there's a new fashion trend emerging. One-legged pants for women. Uh, this is something that uh, I was looking into it, and she was talking about it. It's got, uh, it's th- at certain fashion shows, uh, different Fashion houses are putting out uh, one-legged pants. It's like a half skirt, half pant. And so you literally have one of your legs covered and one of your legs exposed to the elements. And this is supposed to be like a workplace women's wear collection. I, I, I don't struggle to think of which office you could walk into as a woman with one-legged pants and you would not get a lot of attention for that. But nevertheless, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is this going to be really popular? I can see it. I'll tell you why. Because, like, you think about some climates where you just don't know. You start the day, you don't know. Is it going to be 30 degrees? Do I need to be warm? Do I need to be cold? Uh, Radio U Ohio, you probably know what I'm talking about. And um, the, the clearest example, tell me if you've done this. You've been sleeping. You're in your bed. You got one leg under the covers, one leg out. It's the best way to sleep, right? Bring that to pants. Nothing that's dead can ever truly die. You know, like Warp Tour. Uh, it's been gone since 2018. Although they did do like a couple of shows in honor of Warp Tour's 25th anniversary, but it's been gone since then. But it's not dead. Warp Tour is making a comeback in three cities in 2025. Warp Tour will return uh, in D.C., Long Beach, and Orlando, Florida. They're going to be putting on uh, those three day three cities get two day Warp Tour festivals um, that are actually going to be going on sale here in just a few days. They haven't announced any of the lineup because why would they? You should just buy tickets anyways, of course. Uh, but they have said that unlike. While, uh, when we were Young Festival, which takes place in Las Vegas, and has been very similar to Warp Tour since Warp Tour went away. Um, that really, they say, when we were Young Festival has been like all nostalgic bands. Like if you grew up going to Warp Tour, then those are the bands you would have seen there. But they hope that this new iteration of Warp Tour, as they bring it back with the same people at the top, including Kevin Lyman, uh, this is going to not only feature some of those classic bands you remember if you did grow up going to Warp Tour, but also... Uh, the new wave, uh, what's current and what's new and what's the future of music. Man, I remember Warped Tour just being as like the best, worst time. Sweaty, dehydrated, but having a whole lot of fun. And now, everybody put your hands together for producer Allie making her Radio U <laughs> debut on the mic anyways. Allie, are you more nervous now or were you more nervous when Aaron Judge hit a home run to tie the game against the Guardians in Game 3. Oh, definitely more nervous with Aaron Judge. Who's not nervous when Aaron Judge comes up to bat? Until uh, until that game, me. 
<laughs> in the playoffs. I was like, he's just going to strike out. It's just what he does. But uh, mm. yeah, he kind of has gotten the monkey off of his back, it seems. But fortunately, um, although he did hit a home run, the Guardians wind up escaping with a win. Walk me through your emotions as a Guardians fan. How do you how do you even keep watching the stress? <laughs> I can only imagine. It was so stressful that I was texting my group of friends and I was like, I don't know if I can watch this anymore. I'm sick to my stomach watching this game. And in the bottom of the ninth inning, when Lane Thomas hits a double off the wall with two outs. Yeah. I texted them and I was like, man, they pulled me back in. Why are they giving me this help with two <laughs> outs? And then Noel hits that big home run from Big Christmas. That's yes, his nickname. That's the best nickname. <laughs> so possibly good. Possibly in baseball. Yeah. And that just was, it was so amazing. It, even if Cleveland does absolutely nothing in the playoffs from here on out, I am so happy with that win. That is the attitude that, Probably is the good attitude because you can't win every season. And if you're the Guardians, you can never win any season. But it also is probably the attitude that uh, that leads to failure. Do you ever think that? Mm, I mean, I mean you don't actually own the team or right, anything. I, but. I am a Cleveland fan, so I just feel like low expectations is like the necessary outcome that you need to have or mm -hmm. else you will always be unhappy. Yeah, that's so. how, you know, like, okay, I'm a Red Sox. I'm a Packers fan. And so like those teams will give me a lot of hope uh, for a long time. And like I, I'm used to having higher expectations. I'm also a Buffalo Sabres hockey fan. Oh. I tell myself every year they, they I think they have the longest streak in sports of not making the playoffs. So I tell myself every year if they just make the playoffs, <laughs> that I'll be happy. I, that, that's exciting. And yet when they get close to making the playoffs, then I'm throwing stuff. It's like this should all be gravy that you even have meaningful games anywhere close to the postseason. But no, it, it just makes me upset. So I'm glad you have a good attitude about it that, um, uh, you know, you can lose in peace if, it, if that's how it goes. <laughs> just years of conditioning, man. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, where this that's comes I from. <laughs> uh, I, I'll tell you what, though. I am rooting for you and because there's nothing, nothing that the world needs less than a Yankees Dodgers World Series. Amen. I know that will get the highest ratings. <laughs> it will also make, I think, the most people upset. Who would you? Who do you even cheer for if it's the Yankees and Dodgers in the World Series? I, I'm boycotting. I'm not watching if it's <laughs> if the World Series is those two teams. We uh, we all got to rally behind Cleveland. They can do this thing. They can still take them out, right? Yeah. It's not like the Yankees. This is what's sad. Uh, I don't know if you see this as a positive or a negative. It's not like the Yankees are playing well. Yeah. They're not scoring a lot of runs. That's true. It's They're just not. that the Guardians have played a little worse. <laughs> Yeah. Which is not, that's disappointing. But no, we're, ho we're, ho I'm, I, it, yeah, you're right though. If you, uh, just, even if you bow out now, based off of game three, the excitement, the extra innings home run to win the game, that's, uh, that's a memory you can have forever. We're never forgetting that game. Just like a World Series ring. Do you find it stressful going to weddings? Cause I know I do. One of the stressful things, picking out a gift. I know that couples have registries, but I like to go off the registry. I just feel like that's more thoughtful. Well, apparently that's not what you're supposed to do. Not only that, but what you're supposed to do now is many newlyweds are adding to their registry a home fund where instead of uh, getting towels or a toaster or whatever else, uh, you know, kind of home goods things you might need as a new couple, what do you really need? A home to put all of that stuff in. But of course, nobody can afford a house. They're so expensive. The prices keep skyrocketing, inflation running rampant. And so now, according to The Knot and Zillow, they both claim that uh, a home fund being added to a wedding registry is something that has really taken off. I um, wish uh, I could have thought of this when I got married to put the home fund. Maybe I'd actually have my own home at this point. Probably not. I don't have very many friends. I don't think they would have given me very much money. So I had a teachable moment for myself recently. You know, we all like watching the cart narcs and whatever, seeing people, because who, who doesn't hate seeing somebody leave their cart just willy-nilly around a parking lot at the grocery store? Doesn't it fill you with rage? It did for me. I watched a woman do it. I was like, we were both going to our cars at about the same time, unloaded our groceries, and then she gets in her car. She puts her uh, cart up on the island there, um, and I'm like, ugh, I'm staring at her. I'm I'm making mean faces. I'm like, you, who do you think you are that you're just gonna leave your cart there? She drives away, and what good 
did it do for me to sit there and stare at her? I'm the one standing there getting mad, and uh, she didn't even probably notice, and even if she did, like, what, is she going to change her ways because I mean mugged her there while she was leaving her cart? Um, This was a moment for me. I got in my car afterwards, and I sat, and I thought, I was like, you know, like, you could sit here and be mad about this, or what you actually could have done is walked over and got in that cart and put it away. Now, I'm not going to go start patrolling the entire parking lot to put away everybody's abandoned grocery carts. But in that moment, there was two things I could have done. Uh, one is sit there and be angry and not help anybody. Or two is just like, you know, you saw this happen. Just go ahead and take it. And like that would have actually made the situation a little better. She still wouldn't have probably learned a lesson. But at least that's one less parking lot, uh, one less cart sitting around the parking lot. I think many of us have this tendency that we, when we see somebody else doing something wrong, uh, we want to sit there and get mad at them and blame them and think the worst of them. But uh, what we really could do is, like, you don't have to confront them, but you could do something to kind of mitigate the negative effects of whatever it is they're doing. You know, that's how God actually sees things. Where you, We all screw up. We all make mistakes. You might not leave your cart around the parking lot, but there's other stuff we do that probably makes the world a little worse of a place. And God doesn't sit there and just angrily shake his fist at you going, look at this guy screwing things up for everybody else and just sit there and let it be. God sees you and he's thinking the best of you. He's still like, yeah, everybody makes mistakes. I could sit here and be mad at this guy or I could try to help him out. Listen, God wants to help you out. He wants to help you uh, try to curb some of those mistakes and make sure that we're making the world a better place even for the, uh, the few mistakes that we do wind up making to try to change our attitude. That's an attitude God has and uh, I think it's important for us to have that as well. If you want to know more, start talking to God himself. Find out straight from him how he can change your attitude, change your life, and work on making the world a better place. And if you want to know more, go to RadioU.com slash free gift. Now, we're trying to send astronauts back to the moon. I think that's fun. I think that's a good thing to do. We don't know what's there. We got to figure it out. It's a big moon. We got to find out what's going on. Is it just a bunch of rocks or is there more? We need to know. Uh, And apparently, when we send these astronauts back to the moon on the Artemis mission, they need to look good while doing it. It was uh, announced this week. Axiom Space, NASA's commercial partner, has revealed the design of the next generation suit that uh, the astronauts are going to be wearing when they head back to the moon. And it's designed by none other than Prada. Um, I mean, it looks kind of, it, you probably wouldn't know it to see it because it doesn't look all that different from previous space suits that you know and love, but it is designed with Prada in mind. They thought uh, the brand's expertise on design materials um, and just looking good was the right kind of partnership to make to, uh, to really support our astronauts. And, you know, in some ways, I think that's really cool. I'm glad that Uh, We're trying to treat our astronauts right. Like they should be able to have some luxuries when they go to a place where there's no breathable air, you know, like they should be able to still have some nice things at the same time. I don't know if my tax dollars signed up for this. I think they could have done the same exact like suit and probably done it in a more cost effective way by partnering with, I don't know, like no boundaries or something, just something, you know, a little more economically friendly. Get your popcorn ready. It's our weekend tradition. The weekend watch list on the Hudson Show, letting you know which new movies are available for you to watch in theaters and at home this weekend. Three interesting options we're going to go over here. All fairly well-reviewed. We'll start in theaters. Smile 2, the sequel to Smile. About to embark on a new world tour, global pop sensation Sky Riley begins to experience increasingly terrifying and inexplicable events. Overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and pressures of fame, she must face her dark past to regain control of her life before it spirals out of control. The critics seem to be enjoying this one. 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. James Dyer of Empire Magazine says, Creepy and clever, but rarely surprising. But if you're going to a horror movie, what do you want? Actually, you probably do want surprises. So um, that doesn't actually sound like that good of a review. But nevertheless, <laughs> Smile 2 uh, is available in theaters. Now, maybe you're like me. Horror movies are not your thing whatsoever. You need something different. Well, Woman of the Hour is a new movie available on Netflix. In 1970s Los Angeles, as a wave of murders makes headlines, a young woman aspiring to become an actress and a serial killer no, she's inspi- <laughs> She's aspiring to become an actress. 
And a serial killer cross paths. She crosses paths with a serial killer. At least that's how I think this reads during an episode of a dating show. It has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Josh Anderson of Wall Street Journal says, Woman of the Hour may be sensational in the tabloid sense, but it's angry, too, and full of questions. Now I just kind of want to watch to see, does she aspire to be an actress and a serial killer? Or just an actor since he crosses paths with a serial killer? Uh, I didn't write that. Finally, new on Prime Video, Brothers. Brothers tells the story of reformed criminal Josh Brolin, whose attempt at gaining... Uh, going straight is derailed when he reunites with his sanity testing twin brother, Peter Dinklage, on a cross country road trip for the score of a lifetime, dodging bullets, the law, and an overbearing mother along the way. They must heal their severed family bond before they end up killing each other. That one, still so new that uh, it doesn't have a score on Rotten Tomatoes, but Brendan Yu of the New York Times says Brolin and Dinklage might seem like a magnetic pair of bickering twins, and they are what is keeping this ship from sinking. But mostly, it's dismaying to see such strong, dramatic actors stifled in such a sedate comedy. So there you go. Three very different options, it sounds like. Smile 2, new in theaters. There's also Woman of the Hour on Netflix with Anna Kendrick and Brothers with Josh Brolin and Peter Dinklage. Which one will you choose or are you seeing something else entirely? Let me know. 8772-RADIO-U. That's your weekend watch list. We'll see you at the movies. This is a fun experience. I didn't think I'd ever be talking to this guy at least on a radio show i've got matt from the band low cloud but you also if you've uh, been rocking with radio U for a while you might remember matt from his sanctus real days matt now from low cloud welcome to the hudson show yeah what's up hudson thanks for having me on man i appreciate it yeah no i'm so excited about this obviously i'm sure i'm not alone here on radio U. um from remembering you back on sanctus real when you were at sanctus real and back in those days um, so I want to, I do want to talk about Sanctus Real, but first I need to know, Matt, Halloween is getting dangerously close. Do you have a favorite Halloween movie? Oh man. Uh, I, I, I'm a, I'm a lightweight man when it comes <laughs> to scary movies, dude. Uh, I don't, I don't have like a, a scary film that I love, but like, I guess it's funny because I, I don't know if I, I probably have like Thanksgiving movies, Christmas movies, but I don't think I have a movie that I like Halloween, man. <laughs> well, wait, That's, hold on. I, I feel hold so, up. I feel so lame. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not much for scary movies either, but <laughs> you can't say you have a Thanksgiving movie and not tell me what the Thanksgiving movie is. So around Thanksgiving, my wife, actually, it's kind of like a tradition that we start playing the movie the holiday even though it's more of a christmas film mm. around thanksgiving she starts rolling that and she, she will probably watch it like three or four times into christmas that is i was not I, when i think thanksgiving movie there's only one that comes to mind it's planes trains and automobiles oh, uh, that's, so yeah, i that's was expecting movie, you to man. say that but I <laughs> uh, i'm glad that you had a different answer that you, you caught me yeah. off guard there um yep. Okay, let's let's get down to the music, Matt. Um, you've started this new band called Low Cloud, um, but again, many folks would know you from Sanctus Real, a band that is now on the Radio Youth Throwback channel, actually. Um, so tell us the journey from your Sanctus Real days to now where you have a brand new band called Low Cloud putting out your very first song ever uh, this weekend. Yeah, so, you know, I was with Sanctus Real for 20 years, from 1996 to 2016. The reason that I stepped away from the band in 2016 was we just were touring so much, man. And I just had to be home more with my kids. I had four kids and I just really felt the call in my heart that it was time for me to invest more there. Um, and so, you know, I took a break from touring. I still was doing some events, but about, you know, less than half of what I was doing with the band. And just, kind of released some music on my own and crazy enough, actually just signed a solo deal with Goatee a few months ago that I wasn't expecting that came to me. Um, but before that happened, me and my buddy Nick, were kind of just sitting around, hanging out. Nick used to be in, I uh, used to play for a band called Cutlass. Yes. And we were just kind of hanging out going like, man, do you miss playing music with a band or like writing rock music? with other guys. And I was like, yeah, I really miss just that organic get in a room with guitars and just writing that style of music. 
and then also the opportunity to play rock music live. And both of us had missed that. And we were like, we should start a band. And we kind of laughed it off. And then like, I think maybe a month or two later, we were uh, sitting down with guitars, writing our first set of songs. (laughs) And, and we're like, what should we call this? And we try, you know, nowadays finding names, dude, is so hard. Every single name is taken. Oh, yeah. And and so, you know, there was this one um, uh, name that Nick's kids had actually thought was cool, which was Low Cloud. And we thought that was kind of cool. And partly because, like, we write at this season, we're writing a lot about, like, past dreams and current dreams and, like, the changing definition of what the dr- the dream or dreams really look like at this season of life, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's kind of like just chasing what's in front of you and around you and not so much like this far off vision of what could be. It's like, man, no, let's, we're right here. We're right now. Let's go after it. You know, the, our dreams are around us and with us and seasonal. And so um, we loved that idea and kind of the feel of what that name could represent. And so, we went with low cloud and then we realized there was some random band who like had like maybe one song out that had a W in their name. Yeah. So we were like, we'll just take the W I off think, and capitalize it. I think I found <laughs> them when I was looking you guys up. <laughs> I mean, literally dude, there's not one name that like someone on the far corners of the internet hasn't used for some random MP3 they uploaded yep. somewhere, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that though. Cause I was actually going to ask about like where the name came from, but I do want to know too, obviously there's probably a lot of names you batted around that were already taken. Were there any that you like kind of threw out there and then you're like, no, that actually just sucks. Yeah. Well, we were, <laughs> we were kind of like, uh, throwing out different names like around Chrome and words like club and like, you know, all these different just combinations. Yeah. And we, we, we had lists and lists. I couldn't even remember what they all were, but <laughs> and we didn't like hardly any of them. You mm-hmm. know? So, yeah. so low cloud it is, man. I wonder how many bands are out there that are like, we've got a lot of good music and we're like, they could be really successful, but they just can't find the band name. And so they can't put it out. Oh, dude. <laughs> I mean, or how many bands have put out great music, but their name has ruined it for them because yes. they couldn't find a good name, you know, yes. so they picked a really bad one, you know? Yeah. You know, if you're a good <laughs> band, if you can overcome having a horrible band name. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to name and any names. It has but... to stand out, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, so tell that's us, good. tell us, you, you've given us the journey to having Low Cloud become a band. So what is, uh, what is the future for Low Cloud? Your first new song, Sleepwalker, we're about to play it here on Radio U. We just added it to the playlist. But what else do you have to come besides this first song? Yeah, so we're going to be doing just like releasing music probably every six to eight weeks on streaming so we'll be releasing a new song just consistently for the ongoing future that's our plan and then you know we're we still all have kids at home and don't want to be out touring a bunch but we are being strategic about finding some of the right markets uh to play in the right venues and then we're also looking at summer festivals for next year so we're kind of you know, already talking with a couple of festivals who are really interested in having us and then seeking out a couple others who may not know that we're looking for that yet. That sounds, that sounds awesome. It's not too early to get excited about summer festivals in uh, nah, October, man. especially when now you know that low cloud very well may be at the one uh, that you go to. Well, uh, this is, I- I'm just so excited that we have uh, this new music from you, Matt, and from low cloud. Last thing here. Tell us about the song Sleepwalker. What do you hope people take away when they hear this song? Yeah, man, I think, you know, this, uh, man, there's so much, so much I want to say, honestly, about this idea of, of, of sleepwalking, you know, the state of our, our culture and our country is so comfortable at times. And I know we feel with some of the disasters that have happened recently, also with the election coming up we can feel uh, unsettled during these seasons. But overall, man, we live in a really comfortable society, uh, especially for those of us who uh, follow Christ. You know, it's easy to have all the luxuries that we want. It's easy to make idols of things that don't matter eternally. And we all do it, man. You know, it's, it's, 
it's just easy to I, to fall into that. Um, I heard I heard this crazy. I can't remember the quote, but this this thing that this woman said on this documentary a couple of years ago, and it just kind of came to my mind. Uh, it was this woman who was persecuted from Iran. I think it was called Wolves and Sheep's Clothing. It was a YouTube documentary. And I think she was, I want to say she was a pastor's wife in Iran where they were like persecuted for their faith and nothing was easy. And then they came to America uh, and experienced a much more comfortable life. But she made some comment in the film, like she'd rather go back to Iran and be persecuted than to be lulled to sleep here with the American church. Wow. And I was like, whoa, yeah. man, like that's intense. Um, and I think that was like a moment for me where I had to go, like, am I, I mean, for the sake of what we're talking about this song, you know, like, am I sleepwalking in a way? Do mm -hmm. I need to open my eyes to what it really means to live my life? At its fullest. And so I think that's really just the heart and the call of this song is just, you know, to, to think, man, like, how do I open my eyes bigger? How do I open my heart bigger and my life bigger and, and, and live, live out the call that's in front of me and be fully aware of what, what I'm meant to be doing right here and right now and not just let it slip away. Dang. I, uh, that, that is amazing. It's not just a, a song, I guess. It's a challenge, I think. From yes. All right. Absolutely. Well, thanks for listening to The Hudson Show. Please don't forget to rate and review the podcast.